I think this is a great example of how Desmos is still really, really powerful on the SAT, but by itself, it's not going to be enough to solve many questions. We need it to be an assistant for very complicated things, but it is not just like some of those early practice tests from the Blue Book app where every hard question is just plugging into Desmos. We're, so I'll try to do this hybrid solution here. Uh, still, when I look at this, I, I'm just following instructions. And my most important instruction for any math question is plug points into equations. Five points, five equations, I'm plugging them in. So I clearly have a point and I clearly have equations. Now, be careful though, I need to make sure I match the point with the correct equation. And so that does not go with the f of x. It goes with this equation, right? That has a y-intercept. So I'm still going to plug it in pretty blindly. Uh, I have my y value is negative 99 over 7. And that is equal to, well, f of 0, right? P minus 15. So uh, it doesn't matter to me that part of the point, like part of the way I would plug in the point is an f of x. Like it's still, I have an x-coordinate. I have a y-coordinate. Plug them in, right? So the x is zero. So my x's become zero when I plug the point in the equation. The problem people have is they don't trust the strategy. They're like, oh, it doesn't work here. No, it works. Just do it. Now, here we need to kind of go through some certain motions. Uh, I would want to kind of get that f of zero by itself because when we have function notation, basically we're talking about points as well. We're talking about them in a different way. And so it's helpful to get that f of zero by itself so I can understand the real point for the f equation which is the thing I want. So I'm going to add 15 to both sides. And this is where I'm going to start my, my Desmos assist, right? Because I, I don't want to deal with the fractions and that's sevenths. So like, why bother? So how about negative 99 divided by seven uh, plus 15, which is this messy number. But if I hit the fraction button, it becomes the much nicer six sevenths, right? So uh, F of zero is six sevenths. So just to be clear what that's giving us, that is giving us a point where um, zero six sevenths is going to fit into the regular old F equation. So I can even put that in now, right? Because that means six sevenths is equal to negative A to the zero plus B. And so here, six sevenths is equal to what's A to the zero? Well, anything to the zero is one. So that's negative one plus B. So remember the negative in, in this is, is outside of like the parentheses, so to speak. And so that is not being raised to the zero power. Just the A is. The negative is behaving like a multiplication thing. And so we do that after we take care of the exponent. So that's important because it'll get you the wrong answer if you, if you don't do that. Uh, so we're going to add one to both sides. Here I'm much more comfortable, right? That's six sevenths plus seven sevenths. So that's 13 sevenths. So that's my B. Now I can uh, hopefully... Uh, realize that I've got another equation here that a and b uh, have a product, meaning multiply, of six sevenths. So let's deal with that. So that means a times b is 65, 65 over 7. And so a times 13 over 7 is equal to 65 over 7. So uh, actually, I thought I was going to use Desmos here, but now that I'm second thought, I'm good with it, right? So I'm going to divide by 13 sevenths which remember is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So that's multiplying by seven over 13. And so the sevens go and the 65 go into 13. I think it does, right? It goes in, I believe five times, but let's double check. 65 divided by 13 is five. So A is equal to five. That's what we want it, right? So there we go. Um, done, whole question. I thought that was gonna involve more stuff, but I guess I'm wrong. Um, there might be other ways to do this, and this is where I thought I would go to Desmos, where um, I end up using the kind of regression to deal with this. But the numbers worked out much more nicely than I thought they would. And, and so the, the key is we always need to remember that when we have zeros to plug in, that's a very nice thing because zero has this ability to make things disappear, right? So it made the A disappear. It didn't turn it into a zero but it made it disappear in any sort of algebraic way. And then once we got rid of that, we were able to deal with that equation because you can't solve equations with two variables. But if you have one variable, you can. And so zero has that ability sometimes to just knock a, a variable out temporarily so we can see what's going on. So yeah, not so bad. Uh, I, again, I thought that I would use Desmos more there. So I'm not gonna redo the video just for that little intro. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. But to me, this looks worse than it is. And I think that's why I thought Desmos would be helpful here is it looks like I'm going to have to deal with some crazy properties of exponentials, but it's a follow instructions question. We have a point, we have an equation, we kind of put it in. 
They tell us that A and B has a product of 65 sevens. That's an instruction. Just write that out. Write it out like I did as an equation and then kind of work your way there. So at no point did I know what I was doing until the very end when the answer popped out. But that's okay. We take the instructions one at a time. The problem many of you have with a question like this is you need to know every step of the plan before you start. That is a very bad way to think about the SAT and you will stump yourself when you have no reason to be stumped because you, you will be paralyzed, unable to start a question. For me, plug points into equations is a very nice way to start most questions. And so if I see an opportunity, I'm taking it and I'm trusting that the strategy will eventually get me the right answer.